All right, everyone, here we go with the notes for Chapter 3, Multi-Channel Television Strategies. We're going to be talking a lot here in this chapter as things relate to cable and satellite television. And we're going to start off right at the beginning with Section 1 of the notes. New technologies and more loose regulations have allowed companies to offer consumers combo packages of digital television, DVRs, on-demand video, voice telephone, and super-fast internet connections. We talked about uh, one of those uh, pieces of legislation that really changed things around was back with the Telecommunications Act of 1996. Some definitions for you. Broadband carriers are folks that provide services by using high-capacity telecommunication signals. Uh, basically a fancy way of talking about what high-speed internet is. Multi-channel video programming distributors, or MVPDs, are companies that provide broadband signals to deliver video programming. So on top of internet, we're also bringing television content into the home. Most MPVDs offer a mix of voice, internet, and video services, and the type of company that one is identified by is more historical in context. Uh, so, for example, you have Comcast, which is a major company in this realm. It started off providing cable television services, so it's largely considered to be a cable company. Verizon has gotten to become a big player in providing Fios TV services through phone lines. So Verizon still very much traditionally considered a telephone company as its main business line. But those lines are getting more and more blurried as we go along as each industry steps into the other's industries. The distinction between video, television, and internet has largely become one of hardware rather than one of content. And that hardware is slowly merging. All you have to do is look at a smart TV, which is connected to the internet, which brings in streaming programs, both live and on demand, as well as what we think of as traditional TV, whether it be cable or broadcast. The job of multi-channel programmers is normally to select, schedule, evaluate, and promote channels. Those words should be familiar to you. We talked about those in chapter one as the definition of programming. Also, audio programming now on top of television, especially as it comes to the cable aspect of things. And they do so out of the hundreds of content networks and to provide wired and wireless phone and internet services. So the programmer from the cable outlet or from the MVPD outlet is not so much programming individual shows as much as it is programming a lineup of channels and services that it believes its public wants and is willing to pay for. Let's talk about selection. MVPD programmers must choose whole channels for their lineups, depending as much or more on financial negotiations as opposed to the type of content. Because what happens here is that uh, you've got not so much paying program producers, uh, but really you're paying the networks themselves. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. HD and video on demand and 3D content has made competition more complex. The more of these types of services that you offer, the more that they're attractive to certain segments of the market, which means, of course, higher revenues. So what are the main types of companies that we're talking about in this chapter? Well, here's the three that we're really going to focus on. Terrestrial wired cable direct satellite broadcasters, and both wired and wireless telephone phone systems. 
these three types of companies, and again, the type of company that they are is more historical in context anymore in terms of the original service that they've provided. Uh, but these folks are the ones that are primarily in the business of providing all of these different types of services. Cable systems, geographically bounded and franchised wired companies is what we're talking about with a cable system. They use fiber optic and coaxial cable to deliver content. Most of these companies also offer high-speed internet and wired telephone service as well. And some also offer wireless services. Spectrum is a good example of that where they offer a cell phone package that you can get with them. The cost to consumers for the cable services depends on the number of services taken by the consumer, also how many set-top boxes they are renting, if they decide to opt for digital video recorders, and how many video-on-demand movies were rented. That should say VOD movies were rented. So that's what the consumers are paying for. They're going to pay for a certain type of subscription package with the content, the channels that they're looking for, and then all of these different things that they might have in addition to that package. Satellite systems serve about 33 million households as of 2012. One of the major disadvantages of satellite systems is that they lack the ability to competitively supply high-speed internet or phone services unless they join forces with a terrestrial phone or cable company, and that winds up eating into their profits. For the most part, if you're ordering satellite television, the only thing you're getting from the satellite company is the satellite television television. There might be some services offered in conjunction with the TV programming content, things like on-demand and DVRs and things like that. But by and large, the satellite companies aren't involved in directly providing things like high-speed internet and telephone service as well. However, a major advantage for satellite systems is that they can bring service to the millions of households outside of metropolitan areas and if a special note for us in our area is that many times satellite is the only option for those that want to get television programming service because they might be out of reach to be able to use a traditional antenna for broadcast stations and cable doesn't serve their area. I used to live on a road where I could not subscribe to cable if I wanted to because... Spectrum did not provide cable service down my street. So if I wanted to have a service like that, I would have had to have gone with a satellite service. Telephone systems, we're talking mostly about analog voice telephone service here. Uh, however, that has largely given way to a digital meld of voice and data in larger markets. Most rural areas continue to be served by twisted copper pairs that are inadequate for offering video or high-speed internet. So trying to do DSL in some areas also not an option because the wiring system is antiquated to where high-speed internet cannot travel along those phone lines. Fiber and digital services like Verizon Fios and AT&T Uverse uses upgraded fiber and digital lines respectively to provide high quality competition to cable companies, but they're only uh, out in limited areas because they're so expensive to build out. Uh, so as a matter of fact, you're starting to see in some of the more densely populated areas, that's where these kinds of services are becoming more and more prominent because of the densely populated areas and it is possible to be able to wire those areas on a uh, timely basis and there's enough of a market there for that particular type of service to possibly uh, create a significant dent in more traditional cable subscription. So this is a good point for us to take a break and uh, in order to continue with the notes Look up the video titled Part B.